class for um, for uh, Feb. What is it? It's January for January, and this is our sort of the end of our world tour. So um, we are going to end up with uh, creating sort of an Art Nouveau themed um, travel poster, and the uh, the place where we're stopping is New Zealand out in the South Pacific. Um, so with our little bit of a delay, I'm going to go right into the uh, nuts and bolts of what we're going to do and what we're going to need to do it. So let me get you all sorted with our supplies. So this is in watercolor. But again, if you have gouache, um, you are welcome to use that as well. I've got my gouache sort of off to the side for um, in any uh, kind of gouache emergencies. Um, but basically, if you've got a palette of about six colors, these are primaries um, with some white and then a couple of earth tones, um, that will be fine. It's, it's not uh, super vital that you've got every color in the rainbow, just the main, uh, just the main primaries and uh, a few other kind of supplementary ones. Um, I'm going to be obviously working on watercolor paper. I'm using 140 uh, weight uh, watercolor paper, or 140 pound is what they call it. And um, that has been working really good for these that we've been doing this month. Um, I've also got uh, a cotton rag and some paper towels. Um, my paper is taped down. And then of course, you'll need a, a, a variety of brushes. And actually the brushes that you see in that illustrate or that's an illustration, it's a photograph. Um, those are pretty much perfect for tonight. There is sort of a nice range of uh, areas that we're going to be painting. So we want to do um, some bigger areas and then we've got some more fine detailed ones. So anything uh, all the way up to a 12 or even a 14 size brush all the way down to a one or a two um, and then kind of mixing it between like flats or filberts and rounds will get you pretty much what you need to do. Um, and in the very beginning, I showed a, a few slides of the Art Nouveau movement. And I just wanted to kind of re, re, uh, rehash those a little bit. And you'll notice that they're very stylized. Um, this one's a black and white, but there, there's a lot of variety uh, in terms of you know, what different artists did, but the, but the sort of the mainstays are, things are kind of flat. There's a lot of pattern, um, often a lot of sort of more, more pastel-y type colors. This is Henri, Toulouse Lautrec, who is one of the sort of the fine artists of the Art Nouveau movement. So this is kind of where we're getting our inspiration um, from this style of, of, of poster and, and artwork. And this was sort of down around the turn of the 20th, uh, 20th century. So like 1900, early 1900s. Um, and the one that we're gonna use as our, as our base is going to be this one. And this is, uh, a poster from Kaikoura, which is on the east coast of the South Island of New Zealand. And I'm actually going to do this one straight up because there's a lot of um, really fun things uh, that I think we can get out of this one. Um, and so we're, we're going to pretty much be copying that uh, as, our, as our picture for today. So better late than never. We were ready to get start started now. So I'm going to switch it over to the overhead um, camera there. And here is what we've got to work with. And as I've been doing with these, I've done a, um, a, a drawing here, a, a sort of simple line drawing. And I'm going to run through this with you. I'm going to redo it in, in red pen, or actually red pencil, so you can see it. This is my favorite thing I like to use with watercolor as far as a pencil goes. If I don't want the pencil to kind of bleed and, and, and leak all over my painting, this is an oil-based pencil. Um, and it's, uh, what brand is it? Faber-Castell. Um, there's lots of other types that you can get. Uh, I think even Art, Artist Loft uh, has a line of, uh, of, of these kind of pencils. So um, it really doesn't matter. I'm just using one that is oil-based so it doesn't run all over the place. So I'm gonna go over this. So if you wanna follow along here, let me, you know what, let me do this again. I usually give everybody a little bit more time. If you wanna take a screenshot of this, um, so you can have kind of a bigger version. I've got it up in the corner, but if you want to go ahead and take a screenshot, I'll just leave it up here for, for a few more seconds uh, so people can, can have that and have a bigger version of it. So that's something I always like to do for people as well. So three, two, one. Now we'll go back to the overhead screen. 
There we go. There's the small version. That's what we're going to have at our disposal. It's it's actually th these images are are uh, are basic enough um, and don't have a ton of detail. So something like that is going to be fine. Um, all right. So first things first. Let's get um, this drawing in red pencil. I've got in a ruler, which is as usual, not cheating, but I have a horizon line here that separates from the the mountains and the sky from the sea. Um, Kaikoura is right on the beach and it's really known for, it's this uh, part of the country that has this massive drop off from the land down into the water. So there's a lot of like um, different types of dolphins and whales that are really close to shore. And you often will see pods of orcas and dusky dolphins and big massive whales just right off the beach. So I started with our, our horizon line, let's just call it that. It's a nice straight line about a third of the way down. So that's that's the place we're gonna go. And now I'm gonna do a, the series of mountains. Um, it's called the Kaikoura Ranges. And I'm just gonna start right up at the very peaks here. So you can just follow along. You do not have to be exact with this, um, but you know, just sort of put, they're very big, jagged kind of Alps-like, um, peaks. So just sort of generally get the idea here of these mountains right sort of forming that edge between the sky and, and the land. And then of course we have our ever-present sun, which I took a little pill bottle actually and put down and traced, um, but I'll try and do it free, freehand for you. I make no guarantees when I don't have a perfectly round thing to work from, but not too bad so far. All right. And then I've got a little, this is sort of a cloud bank over here. So I'll just put this in again. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but it's sort of roughly, you know, this, this kind of upper left corner. It can be the right if you want it, but that's kind of by the sun. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's do this foreground one. I'll get sort of the big pieces in and then I'll go into any other details after we get that. So this is just sort of the shoreline here. Just this little bank sort of forms a little peninsula or something. I don't know what it is, but it's a good little design element. Um, and then I think what I'm gonna do, I'll do some of these sort of inner mountains, sort of smaller foothill kind of things. And then there's one that kind of goes, oh, it's coming back. Don't worry, it always does. This is that moment of you got to have faith. See, there you go. No more technical difficulties for tonight, please. Thank you very much. And then there's sort of a couple of lines in here. It, it may not make sense to you now, but it will soon enough. And if you look at the little picture in the, uh, in the window there up on the right hand side, you'll see and it's just kind of a color shift here. So this, this, and this are gonna be slightly different than the rest of these mountains. So again, you know, these little lines, not terribly important that you get them exactly right, uh, but it, it'll be helpful. And up here, I'm gonna do this because we're, we're, we're kind of a little bit behind the eight ball here, but this is some uh, sort of snowy little patches up here. So you can draw those in. I've just got them in in pencil. I'll just keep them there. They're there. I'm going to address them, but I'm not going to do that because I want to kind of keep us moving here. And then uh, the star of the show here, this little pod of whales down here. And it's really quite easy. First, uh, it's not nearly as, as difficult as it might seem, but you got the big dorsal fin there on the back, and then it gets to the body of the whale and just comes almost straight up and then curls down. And that's it, that's, that's, your, that's your whale shape. And then there's two smaller ones back here, kind of off in the distance a little bit. So I got two of those. And then there is a little sort of wave crest here and it's just kind of separates the shape of the whale from the water. And 
like that, sort of the wake, the whale wake. That, that's number two. And then last but not least, whale number three. Okay, and then there's also some little highlights in here, which I'm, I'm gonna to get to um, later. Um, I, I'll, I'll let those stay here for a moment and you'll, and you'll see what, uh, what we have in store for them. All right, so we've got our basic setup here. Uh, water, uh, mountains, sky, and then our sort of our foreground here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by staining. This is something I haven't done in the past, but I wanted to try this with this one. Um, if you remember the last one that we did, um, it was kind of a sort of a yellow ochre uh, color. And that's actually what I'm going to be using for this one as well. And it's, it kind of infuses the whole page. So what I'm going to do is if you, look at the, if you look at the sun up in that picture over there, it's this very, very pale yellow. And then these, these little reflections down here, there's sort of some pale yellow here. And then the, the actual snow in the mountains, it has that sort of warm uh, yellowish tint to it. So I am going to put that in and I'm gonna work really lightly. So there's gonna be a lot of water in this. So I'm using a nice big uh, number, it's a three quarter inch brush. Um, you could even use something bigger like a full inch brush or something like that. Um, so that's uh, the brush that I'm using. And I'm, I'm basically just gonna sort of dampen, dampen the top first with some water. You don't necessarily have to do this. I like to do it because it'll, it allows the color to kind of spread a little bit more evenly. I'm gonna concentrate at least in the beginning here with the sky and this sort of upper mountain range here. So I'm gonna use um, yellow ochre over here. We've got yellow ochre. So uh, just to give you a, there we go, yellow ochre. Doing yellow ochre and I'm gonna add a tiny bit, a tiny bit of, uh, what is this, raw sienna. So it's kind of a, a darker version. Um, raw sienna is, or it's actually burnt sienna. So it's sort of a warmer uh, earth tone. So uh, just a little bit of that, not much. It's mostly gonna be yellow ochre. So this gives it kind of a, a sort of a more earthy tone and also slightly uh, more orange. And I'm just gonna spread that kind of evenly through that top part. With the principle of sort of working from light to dark uh, being employed here, because in, in watercolor, that's sort of a, one of the mantra of, uh, of your watercolor artists is you work from those lighter areas and then add the dark uh, areas later. It doesn't always work out that way, um, but it works out enough so that you're, you know, you, you do it enough so that, that it actually makes sense and, and becomes a pretty good practice. All right, so now down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna add the same color, maybe add it, maybe do it a little bit, a little bit lighter, because it's not quite as prominent. I mean, up in, this, up in the sky up here, it's, it's much more, you know, we're gonna be dealing with that color. So I'm just trying to kind of infuse the whole scene with this kind of warm glow. That's the idea. Okay. And because I'm doing this um, sort of all over and, and getting a ton of water right here, you can really see why taping it down is important because I'm getting this nice big wrinkle here, but the tape is, is, is keeping it uh, intact and um, you know, kind of helping us uh, keep the shape that we want. All right, just doing a little bit more, just getting a few spots here that I feel like need a little, those mountains need a little bit more kind of oomph to them. So put a little bit more in there, just something like that. I mean, what we're looking at is, is the reflection in the water, that sun and those, uh, the sort of the snowy areas in, in the mountains. That's the color we're, we're kind of going for at the moment. Okay. All right. So I think that gives us a kind of a nice warm glow. Actually, one more spot right down here. There's, ooh, that's a little bit much. 
it's still wet though, you can kind of just push it around a little bit. And you can see why I like using these pencils. You see these pencils aren't going anywhere. They're staying intact. They're not mixing with the water. That's a really nice feature of those oil-based uh, colored pencils. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up into the sky. Um, and I, the reason I work from top to bottom is now I can go back into this area here and just uh, not worry about it bleeding everywhere as, as much anyway, because it's, it's, it's still slightly damp, but it's not puddles and it's not gonna cause it to kind of go all over the place. And I'm gonna use mainly at this stage, uh, the yellow ochre. So the kind of that earthy yellow, and I'm really going to concentrate on uh, just the area around the sun. So the sun is now gonna become the lightest area. So I'm just pretty much using straight yellow ochre. And then of course we have our obligatory invasive hair, which gets on our paper and is a pain in the neck. One day I'll do a class on that, how to remove hair from your paintings. So just going around the shape of the sun. And I think I'm just gonna, if, if I get a little bit that go into the mountains, that's fine. I'm, I'm gonna try and keep it out of these little uh, areas down here where the, where, you know, where the snow is, the little patches of snow up in the mountains. We're just trying to get the sky only at this stage. This area here, I'm gonna darken a little bit eventually, but for now, I'll just leave it kind of at this sort of lighter yellow intermediate stage. And just using those red lines as my little dividing line. Got a nice warm glow to it. There we go. And I'll give us a little bit more extra time tonight. Um, it's already halfway through because we got a little bit of a late start. Um, but if you if you absolutely have to go at the allotted time, this of course will be um, posted on the Michael's website. Just sort of look for the past classes and you can kind of get the exciting finish if you have to duck out early. I'll just probably go about 10 minutes after or something like that. I think that's about when we started. Okay, so this is that nice sort of warm, um, intense yellow ochre color here. And up here in the corner, it's a little bit darker um, and it's a little bit more muted, meaning it's not as intensely yellow. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the yellow ochre, but then I'm gonna add some of that, um, that raw or burnt sienna, which is sort of another nice earthy tone and maybe a tiny bit of raw umber, sort of a more brown color. So we're looking for something, let's get a little bit of a close up. We'll get in for our first close up here. You can kind of see where we are a little bit more fully. So just kind of the hints of, of a little bank of clouds. And I'm not worrying too much about getting, uh, you know, it right inside there. You know, this is, this is the cloud bank. You know, clouds are a little wispy and don't have defined edges so much. So if, if it leaks out a little bit, it's totally fine. It's, it's just kind of a guideline. There we go, got a little bit darker. So that's a mix of yellow ochre, slight amount of raw umber, which is a dark brown, and then that sort of more orange or reddish brown uh, burnt sienna, which is sort of a mid-tone. For your earth tone colors, you've basically got a sliding scale of raw umber, which is generally speaking the darkest of the earth tones. And then it goes to like a, a burnt umber, which is sort of next in line. And then it goes into a raw sienna, burnt sienna, and then you get into the ochres, 
Um, that's sort of a rough guideline of, of how it works. So we got sort of a nice little cloud bank up there. And this color, actually, I'm gonna use this um, for the next area that we go into. I'm gonna sort of concentrate on these middle ranges here. And almost exactly the same color as this is this. So I'm gonna start using this. I'm gonna start with this brush, but I'm gonna transition into something more smaller because I'm gonna to have to get around these little um, patches. So I'm just gonna start by just doing something like this. And that forms a nice transition from that warm yellow to kind of this more warmish, brownish, orangish color, sort of an earthy, earthy brown, almost orange. So just trying to block in the big areas here first. So a little more water. So kind of mixing that up. There we go. That looks pretty good. And just keep in those big areas with this big brush. I'm not even trying to do the edges here. The only edge I'm really going for is this one, which is sort of a nice kind of continuous line. All this little stuff up here, I'm gonna save that for later. And there we go. Really testing the limits of this brush. But this is why I love filberts, because you see how it kind of comes to a point right there? Um, that's a really nice, I mean, this is a big brush. This is a three quarter inch brush, um, but I'm able to get kind of the effects of a, maybe a three or a four brush just because I'm able to kind of define the edge of it a little bit more. So I'm gonna push my luck even further. Look at that, it's behaving so nicely. And then if it sort of firms up like that, um, you can kind of reactivate the water a little bit or the, the pigment with the water and you're able to get sort of a more continuous flow of color. And there we go. This over here, I'm not gonna bother too much with this brush. So that's about it with that one. I'm gonna go into my smaller brush now and get a little bit more of this detail in here. So mix up a little patch over here. I'll just move it over here so you can see it. So these three colors, ochre, sienna, and then a tiny bit of raw umber, something like that. Maybe a little bit more umber. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it looks pretty good. So this area that I'm working around, these little patches, this is this is kind of the snow, remnant snow pack. All right, and then there's a nice big patch in here. This brush is much more equipped for this kind of sort of interior detail stuff. Did I do it right? <laughs> I think so, yeah, that looks about right. All right, there's, that's what I'm seeing, that's it. Sometimes you lose track of the negative space and the positive space and it's like, is that where I'm supposed to be? Now remember, if you got any uh, issues or um, questions, just throw them in the chat and uh, they can get read out to me by our intrepid impromptu moderators for the evening. All right. Working our way through here. One thing that I see a lot of 
people getting or having issues with when they're painting in general is they try to do too much with, they sort of get into the zone and they're like, oh, I love, you know, all this stuff. And they're using a brush that's like three or four sizes too big for a particular area. So always just sort of, you know, check and make sure that you are using kind of the, the, the appropriate brush for, for whatever area you've got working. All right. There we go. Okay, so we got pretty much that middle range done. So that looks good. And now what's going to happen is it's going to start transitioning into more intense and darker reds um, and, and sort of earthy reds and oranges. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for this middle peak here. And that is almost a straight red, but it's kind of earthy. So I'm going to use uh, kind of a, a like a crimson or or a um, uh, what's another good color? Cadmium red would be a good one. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of this this nice brown uh, burnt sienna. So about something like that. Thinking that's pretty good. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly like the color that we're referencing here, but I am trying to get this kind of nice gradual um, shift in these colors. And remember, we've got this sort of base coat of, of the yellow ochre-ish color. So there's a subtle mix happening here as I'm laying this in. We're getting a little bit of that yellow. So hopefully that serves to kind of tie everything together. So again, that mix, that mix of colors was sort of a, a primary red. Um, and you can, you know, be, be a little bit um, fluid with that choice, but basically like a stop sign red, cadmium red, even a lizard and crimson, which is a little bit darker, uh, vermilion, uh, you know, there's all sorts of, of reds out there in the world. Um, and then you just add a little bit of that, that uh, sienna, the burnt sienna, which is sort of a, a really warm brown. And that seems to be working just fine. So I always like to start when I kind of stop like this, you notice that I, I started over here. So it kind of blends with the previous area that I'm working on. Trust me, it's still happening. It'll come back. It was weeks without doing that. And then all of a sudden it's today, it's decided to blink out a couple times. It'll be back though. There we go. Solar flares. That's what I'm, I'm going to chalk it up to solar flares. It's what's causing it to blink out like that. Something pretty dramatic. All right, so we got that middle one. So it, everything off of this is going to be less intense. And when I like again, like I said, when I when I say intensity, that means how red it is. Nothing's going to be quite as bright as that. Um, so you know, everything should just sort of work off this center red part. So we've got this sort of mediary, you know, in between one. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use some of this red because it does have a, a sort of a reddish edge to it. But it's, I would say, if we look at the, the value of it, it's slightly darker than this, slightly. They're very close to each other. Value is just sort of how light or dark it is. Um, you know, sort of it's shades of gray, if you want to. Like if you took a black and white photo of that, which one would be darker, darker this one or that one? They're, they're actually probably pretty darn close to each other. So I'm going to throw a little bit of orange in here just to kind of add a new color. Um, and a little bit of the raw umber. See how that looks. I think that's actually pretty good. Pretty close. So that's sort of that red color, the primary red, um, a little bit of the umber, raw umber, and then a tad bit of the orange I just threw in there. That probably, you could probably do without that one. 
Um, but this seems to be, it's just enough of a color shift. It's slightly more orange and slightly more brown, not as red. But there definitely was some red in it. So raw umber, red, and burnt sienna. Now that's a little bit darker. So what I'll do is I'll just go and kind of dilute that a little bit. Maybe put a little bit more water in it. There we go. Another great thing about, about watercolor is it's not always about color matching as so much as it is getting, getting all the colors sort of to work evenly together. And so they kind of bleed into each other and you get that kind of nice transition. Okay. And so now down here, we're almost back to this color, but it's kind of a darker version of that one. So we're gonna go back and that's basically in two of those ranges there, just trying to get a closer look. So I'm gonna go back to our yellow ochre. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here that we had mixed up. So I'll make it a sl slightly darker. All right, I think that can work. Let's do that. And there is Karen a little is bit asking, of a shoot. Oh, yes. Karen is asking if value and intensity are the same. Value and, and intensity are not the same. And that is an awesome question. There is, there's basically three qualities of color. Value, which is how light or how dark it is. Um, and then there's uh, intensity, which is how uh, bold the color is. Like this is very intense red. This is a less intense red. It's still red, but it's more brownish red. Um, so that's that's an, another way you measure color. And then the other quality of color is is what actual color is it? Is this is this a brown or is this a red? Is this a red or is this a you know an orange? So those are the three qualities. So um, they're very distinct features of color. Um, and that is a really important thing to understand when you're, when you're looking at color is, you know, that transition there, the value is very close, but the color, the hue is called hue color is, uh, is a little bit different. It's a little bit off. So I hope that makes sense. All right. Just finishing this one off. There's a whole system of color that's related to those three qualities. And it's called Munsell, M-U-N-S-E-L-L. -L. And um, there's, there's, you know, you can take entire courses on kind of the Munsell um, sort of theory of, of art and color. And, um, you know, if you understand those three basic qualities, though, you're, you're, you're ahead of the game, frankly. All right, so this little sliver here is basically this color, but a lighter version of it. So I, all I did was I just added a little bit more water. So the color is, the hue is the same, but I'm changing the value. So this is slightly lighter in value. Same color, different value. Hopefully that helps. All right, so what do we got here? Now this up here is, is darker than everything that we've gotten so far, but the hue is different. So it's more of a brown color. So I'm gonna maybe put a little bit of red in there, a little bit of this um, raw or burnt sienna, and then a little bit more of the darker earth color, the raw umber. So give us more of a brown color. And we're gonna make it pretty dark. I just bumped the camera there. Sorry about that. So let's see how that works. Yeah, there we go. That's more like it. So darker. So the value is different. And the hue, the color is different. It's not red. We're now shifting into a more brown or earth tone. And so this, but this color right here is not very intense in terms of you know, it being red or sort of not intense from a primary color standpoint. It's pretty in intense brown, 
pretty saturated. Intense and saturation are sort of similar. Don't worry, I will not give you a, a color lexicon quiz after this. There will be no testing. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of that nice brown. I'm gonna make that a little darker. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit more of that umber. And just, yeah, there we go. Makes it slightly darker. But still kind of that, that nice earthy tone, not too red, not too orange, sort of more on the brown, umber range, and definitely darker. So yeah, it's, it's I, I'm glad people are asking color questions because that was one of the things that I really wanted to concentrate on here is, is, is understanding kind of the mixing, uh, you know, how to mix that. That might be a little bit dark than what's up here, but I'm going to stick with it for the time being. Um, as I go down here, um, the shift from here to here is very subtle. The shift from here to here is very uh, dark to light. So I got to sort of triangulate this little thing happening. It's very close in color to this, but it's kind of a darker version of it. So I'm going to go back, take a little bit more of the burnt sienna and a little bit of the umber, or excuse me, the ochre. And let's see. So that's pretty good. It's a little bit darker. I think that's going to be a good fit. So you can see how all of this color stuff can be, it's really subtle, you know, cause they're, they're all basically in the same family. They're all sort of rooted in that, in those earth tones. Um, but getting those subtle differences and those subtle transitions can be tricky. All right, so that's pretty good. I could probably get away with a bigger brush at this stage, but I'm almost done. So I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Going right along that straight line. Okay, now we're really going to shift gears. Okay, because we got to go blue. So I think that looks pretty good in terms of our, our color matching. It's a it's different than our source material, um, but it ge certainly gives you the idea of kind of how all these colors kind of relate um, and 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 are working together. Hopefully, um, I think it just as a as a quick critique of this. Um, I think this could probably go a little bit more orange, less brown and more orange. Um, and I, th I think if I have time, I may try that because we'll, but we'll see. I just want to work my way through it. All right. So this next bit is we're really going to try and match this this um, uh, watercolor and or color of water in watercolor, I should say. And if you notice on the picture up here in the corner, there's sort of two you know, minus the reflection, the, the really, you know, like basically this color, that's, that's sort of the reflection. If you look in the water itself, there's two, there's two tones and I'm going to go for that lighter tone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, kind of a yellow ochre base. And actually I'm going to try and get rid of some of this because I don't want a lot of this interfering with this next colors, these next colors that I'm mixing. I want some of this yellow ochre, so a little bit of it around is, is not a bad thing. Um, and I've been using this color up here. This is called cobalt uh, blue hue. So this is the color, this is sort of the root color that I'm using. Cobalt blue is a color in and of itself. Um, what, when you see, you know, cobalt blue hue or cadmium red hue, um, generally what that means, and not generally, almost always, is they've taken out the expensive pigment, like in this one, in this case, it's the cobalt. 
and they've kind of recreated it in the lab, like maybe put some phthalo blue or some ultramarine blue, blue, some cheaper colors and mix them together to create something that looks like cobalt, but isn't actually cobalt. And what it does is it saves them money, it saves you money because they don't have to charge as much. Um, and, you know, so that's when, whenever you see that, um, you, you're, you're generally finding a kind of a manufactured version of whatever expensive pigment you're, you're, you think you're using. So cobalt blue is different than cobalt blue hue. In practical terms, they'll probably have very similar colors, um, but they are different. All right, so cobalt blue hue, and then uh, our, our yellow ochre sort of gives us this nice kind of turquoise color. And I'm just gonna commit to it. And remember, we've got some, I didn't, I didn't draw these out in bright lines here, but down here, you wanna keep some of this shimmery light on there. And, and also the little uh, white spots right around the whales where they're kind of waking wake meaning forming little waves. So it's this kind of turquoise color. All right, so I'm gonna go over these little shimmery areas here. And you can just sort of follow along here. You just wanna have a few little um, highlights where the, where the light is kind of reflecting off of the water. So I'm gonna work on this area first. So I'm kind of just doing a little bit of that. Yeah, just give ourselves a little hint of that reflection. You put a few more in here. Okay. And now I'm gonna kind of work my way around these. There's a few different uh, tones, like there's some sort of darker versions of this and lighter versions of this. So don't worry, you know, if you're, if, as, as you're going along here, if it starts to get like, you know, sort of slightly differentiated little patches of blue, because that's sort of built into it. There, is, there already is two patches um, of color in here. And we're going to go back and kind of highlight that. So now we're going to work our way around the whales. In this case, the little orcas, killer whales. I saw orcas for the first time about three years ago up in Orcas Island in the Puget Sound area. In Seattle. They were chasing a bunch of seals around a little island. It was like a nature show. There we go. Okay. Just sort of taking it in small little little bits, keeping the small brush. Andy, that color looks like a pretty good match so far. I did a little experimenting earlier. You can see the little swatches trying to get the right color. So um, I, think, I think we're in pretty good shape with this one. So I'm gonna use this smaller brush as I kind of work my way in between the more detailed areas between the whales. If you find yourself as you're working, you know, like spending more time, on, I'm, I'm purposely going fairly quickly because I want to try and get everything um, kind of in the last probably 10 minutes of things here. So I'm just trying to get all the elements up and running. If you want to um, spend more time on a particular area, you're welcome to do that. And then you can always kind of watch, watch the tape at home after after we're done here. It usually takes about, I think 20, 24 hours or so for it to get up onto the website. So you'll have a little bit of a delay, but it'll eventually get there. 
There we go. All right. So cobalt blue hue, ochre, yellow ochre. And that's a, that's sort of a nice turquoise color. Okay. Oh, we're so close. And then we're getting over here to the reflections on this side. So I'm going to be cognizant of all those little kind of tough little spots. And working in between a little bit, just sort of giving that reflective quality. Sort of following my little sketch, but also giving myself a little leeway to kind of be improvisational on the spot there. A little more water. Cobalt blue hue, yellow ochre, boom, instant. That's pretty much where we want to be. Okay. So in through here, there is an opportunity to kind of create a little bit more of the, the wavy effect. Um, so you would come in with maybe a darker blue. So what it would mean is um, as you're working along, uh, you could maybe add a little bit more blue, a little bit more, you know, a little less yellow, maybe even throw um, maybe you can throw a tiny bit of black into it. Um, I'm going to move on to the next bit here. Well, it's just a little piece. I'll just do a, maybe I'll do a, a, just a quick show and tell. We do have a little bit more time than I'm used to in terms of looking at the clock. We've got a late start. So I'll just take a little bit more of this blue, um, maybe just a tiny bit of the yellow, just to give it that sort of turquoise quality, and maybe throw in um, a little bit of kind of a black, or even a darker blue, like a phthalo blue, something like that. We've got Nellie wondering, what do you tape your paintings to, or your paper to? Oh, this is just a little piece. You know those boards that you, you can um, pull out of your, you know, like a kitchen, uh, not a sink, but like underneath the sink, those little shelving, they're kind of a laminate. Um, it's it's like basically a particle board with, with some smooth laminate over top of it. It worked great. And so here's my darker blue, and I'm just going to put a little bit of this in, just kind of create sort of a little uh, texture in the water. It's a little bit of waves or the hint of waves. Oh. It'll be back. It always comes back. Always comes back. Come on. Behave. All I'm doing now is just creating these kind of darker passages in the water. Yeah, you'll see it. There we go. So just, and I'm just, I'm just kind of going, going a little quick and easy here with it, with that. But that's the idea. That's the, that's the general approach. Now I'm going to do this foreground uh, area here. Um, I'm going to do the, the, all the dark areas. So the, the darkness of the whales and then this foreground, for, foreground area. And then I think we'll be, we'll be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that blue, since I've already got it kind of open, and I'm going to take a little bit of this black. 
like so, and I'm gonna, you know, use probably less water than, than usual. Because I want this to be fairly dark. See, this is darker, but I'm gonna end up even making it more intensely dark. So our darkest value, getting back to the question we had earlier, Um, is going to be this foreground. And the darkest value in a painting does not always have to be black. It could be purple. So you're generally not going to see a very dark yellow or orange, um, but anything with blue in it is going to uh, potentially be of a, a very dark value. All right. And so I got this whole area nice and dark, and I could definitely make this even darker. And I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna find all the dark colors that I can and just get them as intense as I'm able. So a little bit of phthalo, kind of this dark brown, some of that uh, raw umber. So I'm gonna take some, some of the black and just kind of add it to what's already here really punching out that kind of foreground. Can you tell us again what colors you mixed for the foreground? Yeah, that was a, uh, it's, it's kind of a mix of every dark color that I have in my palette. So there's some raw umber in it. Um, I, I did some just straight black, like an ivory black, but Mars black will work as well, or you know whatever black you have. Um, I put in some, Thalo blue, which is a very dark blue. Um, anything in that neighborhood is going to get you, is going to get you pretty dark. I don't like to use straight black. I mean, black is a great color or lack of color, or however you want to define it. Um, but it doesn't, it it's not very subtle. And you know, I like to have little sort of hints of blue and hints of earth tones. Um, so it, it kind of gives it a little bit of, of color popping through. All right, so that's, that's looking pretty good for the foreground. I think we're good with that. Now I'm gonna go in and do the whales. And this is gonna be slightly tricky because I'm gonna use that color we just mixed. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna kind of take a lighter version of it. Um, and, and by lighter, I mean, I'm just not going to, I'm just gonna take exactly the same color and I'm gonna go over it with a fair amount of water. And I already forgot something here. There is a little highlight on these whales. Um, so what I'm gonna try and do is I'm, I'm gonna try and get that highlight back. There we go. So I just pulled some of that off. Now I'm gonna go in here and just keep that. Oh, it got into my wave. Basically doing kind of, I should be using a smaller brush. See, I caught myself. I was like, oh, I'm in the zone. I'm, I'm actually just trying to get this done. So I'll use a smaller brush. So I'm gonna use a really fine one here. So it'll be much easier to kind of get that highlight. Let's do a little close up. There we go. That'll be better. So I'm just going over everything pretty lightly, fair amount of water, but those little highlights right on the back, right here, right there. Now I'm gonna do it on this foreground one. Same thing. And this is more to kind of cover that little patch because if you know, if you know the, uh, the anatomy of killer whales, they've got that little white patch on them, but this whole whale is kind of in shadow. So that little white patch right here is gonna be this kind of lighter color. And I'm also keeping these waves, uh, trying to keep them as white as possible. See where I didn't use the right brush, I kind of went in there. And if you ever wanna kind of work 
back and just wet your brush, make sure it doesn't have any pigment in it and just kind of go back and forth a little bit. Try to work some of that pigment out. It's not working so great with this particular one. It could like take a Q-tip and just kind of dab it. Um, I'm just going to try and do it with a corner of my brush. There we go. That's good enough. All right, now I'm going to go back with that same color and I'm going to use much more intense, meaning in this case, less, wa less water. And I'm just going to go and make this darker. So a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of that, a little bit of that uh, other blue, the cobalt blue hue, some black, and maybe a little bit of brown, raw umber, something like that. It's a nice dark color. So I'll start with this one. Hopefully it's dry. Yeah, it seems to be doing pretty good. And going around that little patch as best I can, it's still a little damp, but it's, it's behaving itself. And then I'll do the same thing over here, go around the patch. So keeping in the highlights right here. So these, the Art Nouveau um, tends to make everything simple. Um, but you know, the principle here of kind of working around things, um, if I wanted to go in, you know, with much more detail, uh, you know, if this were more of a realistic painting, you could really use this, this approach um, with, with any kind of uh, style of painting. If you wanted to go in here and use more details, you just sort of get that light version of the color in first, and then, um, and then work into your darker versions and kind of build it up from light to dark. And now we're here, we're going with the last bit. Oh, I think these are looking pretty good. Problem with working with these small brushes is you, you um, lose your color. It doesn't hold nearly as much pigment because it doesn't hold nearly as much water. And now just working around the little spot. And that is the extent of what I wanted to show you today. Hot diggity dog, look at that. Okay, we don't have a ton of time, but there we have it. A Art Nouveau themed travel poster from New Zealand, Kaikoura, New Zealand. Um, does, do we wanna try some spotlights, moderator? What do we think of that idea? Of course. Yeah. So maybe if uh, if if you're if you've sort of been working along with me and you want to you want to show us what you've got, um, we can. Oh, oh, there's Sarah. Very nice. Ooh, you did kind of some, a really nice variety. This is much. Uh, you're you're channeling Arthur Dove again. Remember Arthur Dove? That's a very much reminiscent of that that artist. Ooh, very nice. You went sort of a little more earthy up in the sky and the mountains. That worked good. Very nicely done, Louise. And there's Diane. Oh, and Diane, you did that really nice intense patch of red right in the middle. That looked really good. Awesome. Bye, Cheryl. Sorry, you had to go. Oh, you went. Oh, you went a little bit more more intense with the the blue, a little bit more on the green end. I like that sort of green and red are nice complementary colors. So that's a good. That's a good choice to get it more into that turquoise range. Yeah. Claudia. Oh yeah, really nice. Very nice variety of, of water too. Those different patches of light and dark. Oh, somebody's got like dueling moose and orcas. That's quite the exotic uh, setup you got there. That looks awesome. Yvonne, very nice. Ooh, the reflections look really good in that one particularly. Nice job. You put a little bit more in the middle, which I think worked good. Oh, cool. Those look like those watercolor pens or whatever you were using. 
they look really nice and kind of almost like a kind of a marker. Jonathan, oh yeah, nice. Much more, more sort of subtle color in there. A little bit more uh, mellow. I like it. It's very nice. And Bonnie, yeah, cool. In, in your sketchbook of, oh, there's one from last week. I saw that. Yeah, cool. Or two weeks ago. That looks great. Christina, ooh, you went uh, horizontal. I like that. It looks good. Sort of a longer view. And Sally, very nice. Really red in those mountains. That looks nice. And that little patch. And Patty did a drawing. That looks great. So you got you sort of got the value shifts in the in the started to get those shifts in the mountains. That looks really good too. And Teresa, ooh, yeah, nice. Nice solid, intense color. That looks really good. Very cool. It's great what variety you can get from painting the same picture. Sandy, nice. That's a much more blue water too. So that works as well. And the mountains are a little bit more natural. Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah. That one looks like really misty. That looks good. It's got some nice atmosphere to it. And that the sort of the halo around the orcas looks really good as well. Sweet. Sarah, all right. Oh, those mountains look great. It's very convincing uh, sort of the uh, snow cap peaks there look really good, really done well. Aurora, ooh, yeah, nice. Went intense with that color, that blue. It's actually what it looks like. It's very, it's got that sort of glow to it. That's almost Caribbean turquoise color. It's very similar to that off, off of that coast. Very cool. Oh, and then there's Sarah's from a few weeks ago. Awesome. You've been working on it some more, I think. Put some more purples in there. All right, very cool. Well, folks, thank you for, uh, I think that's everybody, right? I think yes. so. Unless anybody well, has any last minute. Thanks for minute sticking with it. I'm ones. glad, I'm oh, glad Amy. we all made it through the technical. Oh, there we go. Amy's got one. Nice. Ooh, that yellow little highlight, the little uh, sort of yellow streaks you got on the top work well. That looks good. Nice. Nicely done, Amy. Oh, the moose. That's the moose. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, next month, we start uh, a new theme, and we're going to be working in acrylics. Um, you can also work in oils, too, if you've, got, um, if you've got those. But I am going to be doing it in acrylics, and we're going to be concentrating on kind of some abstract artists. We're going to do a Paul Cezanne painting, and then Picasso and Georgia O'Keeffe. The, those will be um, uh, the three uh, classes that we'll have um, and the three artists that we'll look at for that uh that month of february um so i hope to see you all next month thank you so much for sticking with it and um be sure to post your stuff uh with you know little michael's hashtags on them if you if you get a chance to throw them up on whatever platform you put them on okay thanks so much everybody have a great evening and um we'll see you next week hopefully take care <laughs>